is Dr. Fuller. I would like to introduce you to the mathematical world around you. How many trees are on this mountain? Did you know that a ratio can help you find the answer? If you know the ratio between the number of trees to one acre on the Great Balsam Mountains, you could calculate a good approximation. A ratio is a comparison between two values representing different things. For example, a ratio could compare the number of parents in a group to the total number of people, the number of males to females, or the number of tires to a vehicle. Because ratios are a comparison, and we love to compare things, ratios are super common in the world. Ratios can be written in three ways, using the word to as in the previous examples, using a colon between the two values, or the values may be written as a fraction. One reason we like ratios is that they represent a consistent relationship between the things. If we change the total number of things, the relationship between the values stays the same. For example, suppose I know there are four components to three boxes. When we adjust the values of one, the other value changes accordingly. I can change the number of boxes and maintain the same relationship. If I change a value incorrectly, the relationship is no longer correct. Let's use some math to investigate this idea. I will write a ratio as a fraction. The multiplicative identity property of algebra states that we do not change the result when we multiply by 1. Or, multiplying by 1 does not change a number's value. So, I can multiply this fraction by 1, and the result will be an equivalent fraction. The relationship between four components to three boxes is the same as the relationship between 16 components to 12 boxes. Another example might be the relationship between the number of owners to the number of dogs in a community. We can write this ratio as a fraction, then multiply it by a convenient one to see how the value scales. In my mathematical world, I have one little problem. I am baking several items to donate to a fundraiser. Baking is a science when it comes to the relationship between wet and dry ingredients. In fact, some of these relationships are so common, they are known as baking ratios. These ratios allow you to maintain the basics of the baked item while adjusting the amounts or the ingredients. One of the most well-known baking ratios is one for pound cake. I learned it as a pound of flour, a pound of eggs, a pound of sugar, and a pound of butter, which is why it is called a pound cake. This ratio can be written like this. If I wanted to reduce the amount of unhealthy fat, I could substitute a different fat for the butter in the same amount, or I could use half oil and half butter. Furthermore, if I wanted to make a smaller or larger recipe, I could adjust the amounts of the ingredients accordingly. For example, one cup is about 125 grams. Instead of using a whole pound of flour, I use one cup. Therefore, I need 125 grams of butter, which is a little less than nine tablespoons, 125 grams of sugar, and 125 grams of eggs. According to the American Egg Board, a large egg is about 50 grams, so I need two and a half eggs in my adjusted recipe. I plan to bake eight pound cakes using 200 grams of flour each. How many large eggs will I need? The Food Network notes the baking ratio for muffins is two flour, to two liquid, to one egg, to one fat. The blueberry muffins I am making for the fundraiser need 
1,500 grams of flour. How many eggs will I need? Finally, I am making some stuffed buns. My recipe makes six buns for every one egg. I plan to make 30 buns. How many eggs will I need? When I went to the store, I bought five dozen eggs. Do I have enough eggs to bake everything I planned for the fundraiser? How many extra eggs do I have? Or how many more eggs do I need to buy? Take a look and you will see a mathematical world around you filled with ratios. Ratios are a relationship expressed as a comparison using the word to, a colon, or writing the items as a fraction. Ratios allow us to understand and use a relationship between two or more things. Some ratios are natural, like the relationship between the circumference of a circle to its radius. Other ratios, such as the length of a basketball court compared to its width, is a relationship that we created. However, whether natural or man-made, the ratio is an essential tool in our work and daily lives.